Okay, good morning everyone and uh, thank you uh, in-person students for joining class and Karen, uh, welcome to class. Thank you for joining uh, this uh, extra class. I'm taking this class because, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, we won't be having class on the last uh, Friday, that is next week, which is November 20... Uh, November 25th, because uh, the in-person students are having their Christmas uh, program, their Christmas party. So I will be missing two hours. So I just thought I will uh, take uh, those two hours today. And then, you know, uh, on Friday, we'll, I'll this coming Friday, I'll take two more hours and then we'll finish uh, our portions. Okay, so thank you for uh, joining class and thank you for allowing me to take um, Pastor Roshan's uh, two hours. Okay, today we are going to be looking at chapter 7. Before we do that, can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone can lead us in prayer? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for today. Thank you for everything you did for us, Lord Jesus. Lord, we submit everything into your hands, our mind, body, and soul. Lord, help us to learn more things about your word and help us to grow in your wisdom and knowledge. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Vimal. Uh, we'll be looking at chapter 7 uh, this morning. Okay. Uh, results. Uh, Jesus has uh, called us and uh, he has designed us. He has... Uh, uh, created us so that we can bear fruit okay so bearing fruit is very normal and uh, God looks at the fruit that we uh, bear the word of God also you know uh, we see how God teaches us how we can bear a uh, fruit in our Christian walk that we read in second Peter chapter 1 verses 5 to 8 but can somebody please read John chapter 15 verses 1 and 2 please John 15, 1 and 2. Vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Thank you. So here we see that, you know, uh, if there is fruitlessness, that means when we, when we don't bear fruit, uh, what does God do? He takes it away. Okay, we will be cut off if we don't bear fruit. So uh, this shows that, you know, God is looking for fruit uh, in our lives, in what he has called us to, in what he has given to us. He wants us to be good stewards. He wants us to be faithful. Uh, he's looking for fruits. If you don't bear fruit, uh, this verse says he, you know, just cuts us off. And also the reward for being fruitful even if you're bearing fruit you know uh, god prunes us what does it mean but that god prunes us means he removes things that are uh, will hinder us from bearing more fruit from continuing to bear fruit uh, you know he removes things that are lifeless in us and so he prunes us means he cuts off all the unnecessary things the things that hinders us the things that are lifeless so that we can bear uh, fruit which means that God keeps working in us uh, so that we can increase in our level of fruitfulness okay and uh, we see in the parable of the talents in Matthew chapter 25 verses 20 and 21 uh, we see that you know uh, God entrusts each one of us with talents he gives us uh, gifts he gives us the calling the vision the resources uh, he calls us into special uh, specific roles and functions in the body of Christ uh, but even as he does that he looks for increase he looks for multiplication you know he wants us to bear fruit in what he has called us to do so he's God is not somebody who does not look for increase or multiplication it's not just the uh, the way of the world but even we see that God looks for uh, increase and for multiplication so we need to be fruitful uh, faithful in what he has committed or entrusted to us and uh, we need to um, you know work hard and multiply and uh, increase in what he has uh, given to us okay 
uh, we also see that fruit comes only in in a season you know when we put uh, a seed uh, suppose we want a mango tree you know and a mango tree to bear mango uh, fruits mangoes or any other tree uh, you know fruit that uh, uh, fruit bearing tree that you want to uh, plant you know when you plant the seed uh, it you know it just doesn't grow the next day into a big tree and on the third day it doesn't just produce fruit okay uh, it takes uh, sometimes months it takes sometimes years for the tree to you know uh, bear fruit uh, the same way uh, you know uh, in life you know when we go through life and god calls us he uh, gives us a vision or calling uh, you know uh, there is a specific season that we will bear fruit but for that season to uh, for us to see the fruit in our lives you know we need to be faithful we need to be sincere we need to be committed uh, we need to be patiently working hard uh, you know uh, to bear fruit uh, but times you know when uh, uh, when we come to the fruit bearing season and we are not bearing fruit uh, then you know we need to examine or we need to see why we are not bearing fruit so for example you have planted a mango seed uh, you know the the plant has grown it's grown to a tree uh, and a full grown tree and then now you're looking for fruits and if the tree is not bearing fruit, then you know there is something wrong. Then you would do something about it, right? In the same way, you know, uh, when we are not bearing fruit, when we have worked hard, when we are in a place where, you know, when God has called us to do something, we are doing that and we are not seeing fruit, uh, you know, we need to examine our own lives. So when, how do we examine our own lives? What do we do? So we have to ask some questions, some important questions. Am I in the right place? Uh, am I in, uh, in the right time where God wants me to be, in the right place where God wants me to be? Uh, or maybe, you know, have I been negligent? I have uh, uh, overlooked things or there's some sin that is a hindrance or some way that, you know, I've uh, done things that have been displeasing in God's sight. Uh, or, you know, sometimes we also are in the wrong season and we want to bear fruit. So we need to see okay, which season am I of life am I in? Am I in the foundation season where I need to work hard, I have to dig, I have to plow the ground? Uh, or am I in the season where, you know, I am uh, have to sow seeds um, where the digging is over, the planning is over, the hard work is done, I have to sow the seeds? Or are you in a season where uh, you need to flourish and grow and build on what God has given to you? Or are you in a season where there's, uh, you know, uh, where you have to harvest the fruit? So you need to see, you know, which season are you in, whether you are in the right place, the right time to bear fruit, um, uh, that God wants you to, uh, you know, uh, are you doing what God wants you to uh, do? Maybe sometimes uh, you are in the right season to bear fruit and you're not bearing fruit. Uh, then you can ask, you know, uh, is there something that I have uh, done that is displeasing in God's sight? Or I've not, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I feel or sense that I am doing uh, uh, God's will. I am in the center of God's will. But maybe, you know, you've not been listening to him. You've not been doing things in the right way. Um, so you need to uh, check on yourself. Maybe ask the Holy Spirit to lead you, guide you, show you. Uh, maybe uh, there is some... Uh, you know, a hindrance of your own um, sins that are coming in the way, uh, lack of knowledge. Maybe you think you're in the right place, but God, that's not where God wants you to be or doing what you, uh, you know, God wants you to do. Uh, so you can ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and um, guide you. And then you can move on to the right place. The, and then, you know, to be, uh, uh, you can receive the knowledge of being in the right season and work uh, towards completion of season and come to a fruit bearing season and then you will see uh, that you know God will enable you to bear fruit um, and then you can bear fruit for his kingdom and also bring glory to his name okay uh, another thing that we need to keep in mind uh, about results is that you know when we are in ministry uh, uh, sometimes we can exaggerate, uh, you know, what God is doing in and through our lives. Uh, so, for example, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, you are a pastor or uh, you know you you're somebody who's an evangelist or a missionary uh, you know or an apostle or a teacher you go from place to place and you conduct crusades or meetings and uh, you know you can just uh, when you meet people and they ask you how your ministry is going um, you can say yes you know when uh, wherever i go and preach there are uh, you know, hundreds of people uh, who come and, uh, you know, when I give altar call, hundreds of people uh, accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You know, uh, there's a mighty revival that breaks forth in the city, the church, um, or, you know, um, uh, hundreds of them, uh, uh, you know, are healed and saved and delivered. Uh, so, you know, uh, that can sometimes be an exaggeration. So people will think, envision and say, okay, hundreds of people uh, are coming uh, to know the Lord. You know, hundreds of people are healed. Uh, there's a revival that takes place. And you say, you know, every time I have an altar call, people are crying, moaning, weeping. I uh, can see deliverance that happening. Uh, sometimes it can just... Uh, uh, we're not saying that God is not working in your midst, but there can just be, you know, a couple of them, like about uh, one or two or sometimes even 10 or 15 of them. Uh, but, you know, the way we exaggerate is we talk in hundreds or thousands or, you know, uh, the whole stadium is filled when I went for that crusade and things like that. Uh, so it's uh, important that we don't um, uh, exaggerate, you know, uh, what God is doing because, you um, you know, um, God is not just interested in uh, all of our reports, but he's just interested more in, uh, you know, our motives, why we're doing what we're doing, how we're doing it. Uh, and uh, so, you know, just say yes, you know, when I go, uh, uh, there are people who are saved, healed, delivered. Uh, there are people who accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So, you know, um, uh, make sure that your reports are appropriate, um, are exact. The numbers that you, um, uh, you know, reveal or talk or share. Uh, maybe you're a pastor of a congregation. You're invited by another congregation. You go minister for a couple of days. But when you come back, you have an exaggerated account of what happened. Uh, but it's important to develop a discipline you know, of being accurate in our speech and even when you report results. So even if you're uh, making a yearly report of your church, you know, number of people who attended various programs, you know, make sure that uh, your congregation is actually keeping a count of the number of people who attend various programs, uh, the church services. Um, also, you know, make an account of how many people accepted Jesus Christ. You can do a way like um, make a way uh, of counting things like this. Um, sometimes when, when we call an altar call, uh, there's the ministry team, there is the uh, you know, the people who are ministering, the prayer team, uh, sometimes they can become so much more in number than the people who really come forward for, uh, you know, uh, healing or deliverance or, uh, uh, you know, accepting Jesus as the Lord and Savior. So, you know, keep an exact count and mention that uh, to people. If you don't have an exact count, just say, you know, yes, there were a few people who came accepted the Lord's people who are healed and delivered. And yes, God is moving, God is uh, working. But don't over-exaggerate, okay? Uh, the other thing is uh, acknowledge uh, another man's labor, okay? Um, can somebody read 2 Corinthians 10, 15, Galatians 6, 4, and 1 Corinthians 3, 5, and 8? Can somebody read that, please? Second Corinthians 10, 15, Galatians 6, 4, and First Corinthians 3, 5, and 8. Anyone can read that, please? Second Corinthians 10, 15, not posting things beyond measure. That is in other men's labors. But having hope that as your faith is increased, we shall be greatly in in led while you in in worship. Galatians for but let each one exam, examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Corinthians three fifty five. Who then is, is Paul? And who is Apollos? 
what mistress through whom you believe believed, as the lord gave a gave a no human hands and he who what was our own and each one will receive his own reward according to his own thank you uh, nikhil so here we see that um you know not boasting paul is writing to the church at corinth he says you know don't boast of things beyond measure that is in other men's labors but having hope that as your faith is increased we shall be greatly enlarged by you in our own um, sphere okay and the other thing that uh, he writes to the church at corinth uh, you know uh, the church at corinth there were different people who went and ministered like there, there was Apostle Paul who went and ministered and Apollos and then people you know were causing a division among themselves some people said that we belong to Paul people some people said we belong to Apollos and so Paul is writing and saying you know who is Paul who is Apollos uh, but you know we are all ministers uh, through whom uh, you know God has called us and entrusted each one of us a ministry uh, so he says you know there is someone who plants uh, someone who waters um, and he says but each one will receive the reward according to his own uh, labor okay so what is paul basically saying here is that you know um uh, uh sometimes you know uh, god might call us to do uh, a special give us a specific calling uh, a ministry uh, and we can go to the to that place and begin to minister uh, maybe it's a place that you have to start something new Okay, so when you start something new, we know it's like uh, we said there are different seasons. We looked at this in uh, fulfilling God's purpose for your life. There is a foundation season, the digging season, where you have to work hard, you have to plant. Uh, it's a very difficult season, and then you move on to the sowing season, and when you take care of the plant. Uh, so there are different seasons that you know we go through. So sometimes you can God can take you to a place where you have to start afresh. But there are times when God will take you to places where there's somebody else who's already done the foundation. They have worked hard in that place. Uh, they have built a church or they have started a ministry. Uh, they have established things. They have done things. So you are going uh, not in the foundation season, not even the sowing season, but in the building up season. Okay, so you're going there. Uh, things have been laid out. Things have been done. Um, you're just going there to build uh, people up. There can be times when uh, God can take you to a place to minister where um, everything is done and it's a time where there is a harvest season. So when you go, you know, people are... Uh, lives are just touched people are just uh, uh you know minister to healing and deliverance is happening uh lives are being transformed people accept jesus christ people are ready for missions ready to go out uh, uh, ready to be prayer warriors and do things uh, uh, for the kingdom of god uh, so you can think it's all happening because of you you know wow you know things are just growing multiplying there's fruit uh you know uh, uh and so you can think okay everything is happening because of me or because i'm very spiritual or very prayerful but you need to remember that there are people before you who have worked hard and you have to give them the honor that is due so when you are going there and uh, basically in a season where you're harvesting you know just thank god for people who have worked hard in the foundation season or the sowing season or the building up season uh you know uh, recognize their work honor them give thanks uh, to god for their lives what they have done what they have contributed um you know or uh, don't uh, rob somebody else of the honor that is due to them uh, like paul says yes you know apollos came and ministered to you at corinth i also came and ministered paul went uh, in the second missionary journey he spent 18 months there uh, ministered to the church uh, at Corinth, so he built them up in the faith and the things of the uh, the, the word. Uh, also, you know, he ministered to the, them through various gifts, and they were so zealous uh, they, uh, for the gifts of the Spirit that everyone, you know, just desired for those gifts that Paul was uh, 
flowing in so mightily and uh, the church at Corinth was just a powerful church in the sense that they were just flowing in all the gifts of the spirit every time they met one had a word of wisdom knowledge prophecy healing they were speaking in tongues there was interpretation of tongues they were very excited to come to church because everyone wanted to serve each other through the gifts that they were uh, you know to the gifts of the spirit and they were uh, they were just ready with all of what God was just giving them word of wisdom knowledge prophecy healing and things like that so the very vibrant church in the sense of uh, you know flowing in the gifts of the uh, spirit and uh, so there was also divisions there were also their own weaknesses that they were uh, facing uh, there were divisions one group was saying we belong to Paul's one group saying we belong to Apollos uh, so Paul is saying you know who's Paul who is Apollos you know we are just uh, human beings used by God but it's actually God who was working in and through us so it was the fruit that is being born now in the church of Corinth is not because of Paul or Apollos or you know somebody else but it is because of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ who works in and through each person um, and you know he's the one who brings about deliverance healing and transformation in the lives of people and also he says that you know all those who work whether it's Paul Apollos or anybody else you know who worked uh, uh, in God's field in God's kingdom they will receive the uh, reward so you know um, when when you go and overtake a ministry or in in church you know you're you're going to lead a team uh, you know just recognize the people uh, the leaders who have worked before give them the honor that is due recognize them for what they have done and uh, honor them okay uh, and also it's important that we give God all the honor because it's not because of us uh, but you know we are just weak vessels uh, it's uh, him uh, who works in and through us so it's his anointing his power the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit is a gift of the Holy Spirit that is given to us as grace gifts you know the gifts of the Holy Spirit are grace gifts means that means we don't earn it uh, we don't do anything to achieve it it's just given to us by the grace of God it's a gift of God and so you know without those gifts we cannot do anything without the anointing of God we cannot do anything without the power of God being manifested in and through our lives you cannot accomplish anything so it's not us it's the work of the Holy Spirit it's God's work in and through us and we are just you know vessels through whom God is using us to you know uh, uh, to touch the lives of other people so whatever we do you know uh, we need to uh, uh, give glory uh, uh, to God okay so sometimes uh, when we are giving glory to God for what he has done you know uh, maybe we're sharing something that God has done uh, for five minutes maybe three minutes we're just talking you know I did this I did that I said this and when I said this you know this person uh, uh, was healed this person was some people move mightily in the spirit so you know we can talk about uh, for three minutes we or four minutes we can talk about all about me I what I did and then we know you can just say in the end glory to God uh, which can take hardly a minute so you know all the time we've uh, we've uh, not glorified God even though we've given him the glory in the end but all the time we've been glorifying ourselves so we need to uh, put away the I me myself and just give God the glory because it's all about him it's uh, he who has uh, worked in and through the lives of uh, people the last thing is to not compare and do not compete uh, with others uh, look at what 2nd Corinthians 10 12 says so can one of you please read that 2nd Corinthians 10 12 class ourselves class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise thank you so Paul is saying no, don't compare don't compete uh, uh, with uh, others you know uh, because when you do that what happens uh, you know you're actually acting foolish you're not being uh, wise okay uh, so when we look for results uh, in our ministry 
when we look for whether we're bearing fruit or how our ministry is growing, we basically compare ourselves with other ministries. So for example, if I'm doing, I have started a, a children's organization, then, you know, uh, or a youth ministry, or I've started a church, then uh, to see if my church is growing or uh, the ministry is growing or bearing fruit, uh, what do we do? We try to compare ourselves with uh, uh, with other pastors. And, you know, when we compare, we basically get into uh, uh, a mindset, slowly a mindset of competition. We begin to not only compare, but we uh, then compete. We say, okay, that church uh, is a, a big church in the city. They have so many, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, members so i'm also going to work towards that you know um, getting so many members into my church or you know this church is uh, doing so much of um, outreaches so even i'm going to do uh you know and then you kind of measure your food by saying okay you know that the, the biggest church in the city is doing five outreaches i'm doing three outreaches uh compared to uh, you know one what i did last year so you know i'm bearing fruit i'm growing you know a uh, fruit bearing uh or whether you are uh you know growing in your ministry or bearing fruit in your ministry it's not by comparing and competing with other ministries and other churches. How do we know that they're bearing fruit is, you know, uh, to see the lives of people. The lives of people are being transformed. Um, people are growing into Christ likeness. People are growing into being mission minded, uh, you know, into building God's kingdom. Uh, you know, uh, that is the fruit that, uh, you know, we are bearing. And, uh, you know, uh, that is the kind of fruit that God is looking for and that he is uh, pleased with. So let's not compare or compete uh, with other churches. Um, you know, we need to be faithful with what God has entrusted us, um, you know, and see if we are giving our best, if we are growing into what God has called us to do, if we are doing the will of God, um, and then, you know, when we stay focused on all of these things, you know, being faithful, sincere, committed, you know, uh, God will help us surely to bear fruit. Okay. Uh, 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 the end of this chapter uh, is a parable given from Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 uh, to 6, where it's a parable of a landowner who owned a vineyard. And uh, he wanted laborers uh, to come and work in his vineyard. So very early in the morning, he goes and he finds some people standing in the marketplace, not doing anything. He asked them, he told them, come and work in my vineyard and I will give you one denarius. So some of them are willing. They came, they started working. Then he goes out again in the, you know, uh, the third hour, he goes out again. He finds some people. He says he'll pay them one denarius. He brings them uh, to his vineyard and they begin to work. The sixth hour, he goes, uh, finds again some people, tells them he'll pay them a denarius and they're willing they come and work. In the ninth hour, you know, he uh, again goes out, he finds some people, he looks, uh, he tells them they're willing to work for him. He says he'll pay them one denarius and they come to his vineyard and they start working. Uh, and then he also goes out and hires uh, about some people in the 11th hour, okay, which is almost towards the end of the uh, day. So we see that, you know, uh, uh, at the end of the day, people start to stop working. They come, stand in the line, and they're taking their uh, their wages for their work that they have done uh, uh, for the day. Uh, and uh, the people who came very early in the morning noticed that, you know, the ones that came the third hour, sixth hour, ninth hour, and even in the towards the end of the day, they all received the same wages as they have received, even though they started working from the morning. Okay, so they're very upset and disappointed and uh, they, you know, they go and meet the owner of the vineyard and they tell the owner of the vineyard, you know, uh, you what you have done is uh, unfair because the people who worked in the last hour, you make them equal to us who have, you know, borne the burden and the heat of the entire uh, day. So, the, you know, the owner of the vineyard says, you know, didn't you agree to work for me for one denarius? And they said, yes. And so the, uh, the owner says, didn't I pay you that one denarius? They said, yes. Then he says, uh, isn't it lawful for me to do uh, what I would want to do with my own money? 
so he says, uh, you know, I have all the rights. I can pay whoever uh, works for me, whether they work for me in the morning or they work for me at the 11th, they come in the last moment and work. Don't I have the right to, uh, you know, to give them what I want to give them or pay them what I want to pay them? Uh, so it's, I'm the owner. So whatever I spoke to you, I was faithful and committed in giving you what, uh, you know, I spoke, so take it and go. Uh, and then, you know, uh, Jesus ends his parable by saying, the first will be last, uh, the last will be first, and the first will be last. For many are called, but few are uh, chosen. So what is Jesus basically trying to teach from this parable? He's trying to tell us that it's God who decides who he calls into what ministry. Okay, God calls whoever he wants uh, into whichever ministry he wants them to call, he appoints, like we read in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, the fivefold offices that we find uh, in the body of Christ, the office of an apostle, prophet, uh, a pastor, uh, uh, evangelist, and a teacher. You know, these fivefold offices, uh, God gives it to whoever he, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ gives it to whoever he wants to give it. OK, so he calls whoever he wants to call uh, to whichever area of ministry he wants to call them to. He calls them and how he blesses them, how he anoints them, uh, what he wants to do in and through them, how great he wants to make them is all the will and the choice of God. OK, having said that, it does not mean that God is partial. Uh, the word of God says that God is uh, not a partial God. Uh, he's a just God because that is his nature. He cannot go away from his nature. But, uh, you know, in his divine sovereign knowledge and will, uh, he, uh, uh, you know, he calls whom he wants to call for whatever ministry he wants to call them to and how he blesses them. You know, uh, it is his own will and his own sovereign will and uh, choice. But what we need to do is be faithful with what God has entrusted to us, committed and sincere and we will bear fruit, uh, we will receive the reward for our labor. Okay, so this is the end of chapter 7. Anyone has any questions? Thank you for joining class, Prabhu. Anyone has any questions? In-person students? I hope you had a good night's uh, rest. All of you were very tired. Had a busy day on Saturday and a busy day yesterday helping out at church, volunteering. I hope all of you slept well and feel rested. Yes, no? No question. No question. Okay, thank you, Rin. Okay, we'll move on to uh, Chapter 8, uh, Fellowship. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, even though we are all, um, uh, you know, washed by the same blood of Jesus Christ, uh, you know, we have one God, uh, we have one Savior, uh, we have one, uh, you know, uh, book that is his word of God to which God speaks to us. We have the same word of God. We have the same Holy Spirit. Uh, yet we see that, uh, you know, we, there are so many different denominations, uh, different styles, different forms, different expressions of worship uh, that is there. Uh, but irrespective of all our differences of liturgy, the style of worship, our expression of worship, forms of worship, uh, we are all one because we are washed in the same blood, we have the same Holy Spirit, the same Word of God, um, and we all are part of uh, one body of Christ. We are part of one kingdom that is the kingdom of um, God. But it's sad that, you know, um, uh, even though God has called us, uh, you know, uh, and given us different callings, different purposes, different functions in the body of Christ, a different vision. Uh, but, uh, you know, even if it's though it's different callings, different functions, different visions, but all of us, you know, uh, whatever God has called us is all for the building of his kingdom and all for the building of the body of Christ. So even in church, some are called to be a uh, in, in a specific local church, some of us are called to be apostle, some of us are called to be a, a, a prayer warrior, helper, uh, administrator, uh, you know, teacher, uh, pastor, you know, uh, 
whatever but you know we all different callings different functions but we all you know when we all work together it helps in the smooth functioning of a local uh, uh, church okay and uh, we see that you know um, uh, it's also very sad that uh, even as we go about fulfilling God's vision, call, uh, ministry, we all seem to work, uh, you know, isolated. We don't uh, want to connect with other ministers, pastors. If you're a pastor of a church, you probably know the other churches in your city, the names of the churches, you know the names of the pastors, but you don't have a close personal connect, a personal relationship uh, with other pastors. Or if you, uh, uh, you know, heading a ministry, uh, a Christian organization in the city, you know, maybe you know the other Christian organizations, the other pastors or churches, but you are all, we are all working in isolation. We don't want to connect with each other. We don't want to build uh, meaningful relationships. Even though we come together for a meeting, it's all about just uh, sharing ideas. It's all about just sharing our thoughts, what can can be done uh, but it's not about building uh, you know personal connect a personal fellowship a personal relationship uh, with each other and I think that's very very important uh, for us to do because you know as leaders as pastors as people in the ministry you know we need each other to build each other up uh, to mentor each other to correct each other you know, when one one leader falls, the, the others can, uh, you know, come in, uh, guide, help, uh, instruct, uh, you know, build that person up and put that person back on their feet. Uh, but it's uh, sad that, you know, we don't even know each other. We don't want to build any relationships. We're scared to build relationship with other pastors, uh, connect. Uh, even though we have a relationship, it's just very superficial. You know, it's hello, uh, you know, just very on a very superficial level. It's not on a very in-depth, deep level. You know, um, uh, on sa Saturday, we had our uh, uh, one of our uh, weekend schools and uh, there was somebody who stood up and uh, just testified in uh, the end. Uh, she was saying how uh, she and her husband are, uh, you know, in the ministry serving the Lord. Uh, how her, minute, her husband went away from, you know, uh, 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 into wrong doctrines and, you know, um, and how she's going through a very difficult time in her life. She just doesn't feel like praying, reading the word, uh, you know, um, uh, she's ministering, but life seems so, uh, uh, you know, um, meaningless, purposeless. Uh, and she says, there's no one I can go and share with, no one who can uh, help me. I'm looking for somebody, but I can't. And it's so sad because you know, when we're in a ministry, we, uh, we're so busy doing ministry that uh, we don't have the time to build uh, a relationship. So, you know, uh, and we think that as ministers, we are here to minister to other people, uh, but we will not go through any temptations or we will not go through any problems or we will not go through any difficulties. Uh, but we fail to understand that we are human you know we fail to understand that people also go through problems and difficulties that we need help uh, sometimes even pastors when they go through problems and difficulties they you know put it all behind uh, just focusing on ministry somehow they think you know uh, things will settle down, things will work together, uh, things will just happen, uh, but they never cry out or ask for help. And then it sometimes becomes like a volcano that just erupts and then nobody can really do anything. And uh, not only the, the the person's life is destroyed, but their ministry is also um, uh, destroyed. So it's important that, you know, the citywide church, when you talk about citywide church, it means that all the churches, the local churches in a city, uh, you know, comprise uh, of the citywide church. So when you talk about citywide church, it basically refers to all the local churches in that city. Okay. Uh, so it's important for all the local churches in a city to come together, you know, to be united, to be strong, uh, you know, uh, to know that whatever calling whatever vision that god has given to us it's not just a, a personal agenda it's not a personal business that we have but it's all in the context of the kingdom of god so we're not just building our own uh, ministries our own churches but we are actually even as we go about doing it we are building the kingdom of god so it's important for us to move from a place of just looking at our own churches our own ministries uh you know 
uh, to see how we can uh, uh, build the kingdom of um, uh, God. Okay, so it's not about my ministry. It's not about my name. It's not about my church, uh, uh, but it's how I can build the kingdom of God. It's actually about how we can establish the rule uh, the dominion of god in the hearts and lives of people and how we can work together as so-called pastors or ministers in the city uh, you know, uh, to bring about a unity in the body of Christ. You know, all the uh, pastors, all the ministers, all the, uh, you know, believers coming together, how we can uh, come together in unity so that the kingdom of God is strengthened. You know, just imagine if all the churches come together, if all the ministries come together, you know, uh, uh, what strength and power is there in um unity when you know when we come together god releases his power his anointing in such a great way that you know whatever the social evils that are happening in our city like this this prostitution this pornography this suicide this lack of job this poverty all of those bondages can be broken uh, because all the churches in the city or the believers in the city are united together. They're praying together. They're working towards all of these social evils. Uh, you know, uh, the churches that are working towards, uh, you know, uh, uh, building up the poor orphanages, uh, all can come pool in their resources. Just imagine the power and strength and how the power of God just works in unity you know when there's unity and oneness not only in our in our ministries or in our local church but in all you know the believers together in a city when they are there is unity and oneness irrespective of our denominations the power of god can so powerfully be manifested you know um we can see the move of God. We can see God just uh, delivering people in our city, healing people. Corruption will come to an end. Uh, you know, uh, violence in the cities will come to an end. And it has happened in a couple of cities where people have come together, prayed together. There's unity. The power of God is just so powerfully uh, uh, manifested. So, you know, uh, we have to have a kingdom mindset, a kingdom culture. Uh, a kingdom lifestyle, uh, uh, you know, always think in terms of kingdom building, okay? Even though God has entrusted you a ministry or a church, how can my ministry, how can my church build, come together with other churches to, you know, to impact our city, to transform our city and to build uh, the kingdom of uh, God? So even as we are going about uh, kingdom building, you know, um, uh, we also can see how, you know, uh, if I'm suppose I'm doing a children's ministry, I started a Christian organization for children's ministry, I can partner with other children's uh, ministers in the city, uh, see how we can come together, collaborate together, uh, you know, work together to uh, reach out to children in our city, minister whether children in the schools, uh, you know, or uh, children in the slums, how we can minister to them, you know, some of these uh, uh, workers, children, laborers, daily wages, uh, wage la laborers, how we can all come together, pool our resources, build an orphanage, you know, or make a school where we can provide education for the less privileged. Just imagine the impact uh, the kingdom of God can have on the city. And uh, when we come together also like this, together in unity as as one uh, in uh, 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 as one body of Christ, you know, the, the people in our city will see this unity, will see the power of God and, uh, you know, people's lives will be transformed. Uh, you know, we don't have to go about preaching and teaching. People will just uh, feel the power of God in our churches uh, and they will come and they will be ministered to and our city can be transformed uh, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And all of this can happen when only when there is unity and there's a oneness. And that is what was Jesus' prayer in John chapter 17 when he said, Father, let them be one as uh, we are um, one. So uh, even as you are all preparing uh, to build God's kingdom, fulfill God's call, remember it's not just about you going in isolation and working somewhere and, uh, you know, ministering or doing what God has called you to do, but partner with others. See how you can build the kingdom of God. So even as you 
partner to build God's kingdom of God. Don't enter to partner with saying, okay, uh, let me partner with other children's ministers so that I can get some of their resources. I can, uh, you know, I can, uh, what I can be benefited from them. Uh, don't look at how you can be benefited, but also look at how you can, you know, give into other people's life, how you can uh, share your resources uh, with others. And I think that is what we have done with uh, it at, at the APC. All of our resources are so free, whether it is, um, uh, you know, our uh, children's church curriculum, whether it is our school outreach ministry, whether it's pastors' books, all are freely available on the internet. Anyone can go download, any church can go download and also uh, use our uh, resources. And also we see that, you know, a pastor has started, uh, uh, you know, every month uh, uh, we have uh, a fellowship of uh, pastors and, and uh, leaders in our city. So uh, it, it, we all meet at, uh, you know, in, in a hotel at eight o'clock uh, where all the uh, pastors from various churches, uh, ministers, uh, Christian leaders in the city come together. You know, we just meet for a time of worship. There's praying. We pray for our city, pray for our nation. Then we have breakfast. And then, you know, we take a scripture passage and then we divide into groups and we discuss about that and share. So just a time of getting to know each other, fellowshipping with each other, seeing what God wants us uh, to do. And it's a powerful uh, time. So even as a church, you know, even as pastor writes all of these books about kingdom building, how we should be one, uh, how we should do things together, he's also done things towards, you know, fulfilling what he has written uh, in this uh, book. So it's important for us to build friendships, relationships uh, with other ministers, partner with them, with the ministries, give in to other ministers, uh, give in to other ministries, uh, see how you can share your hearts, your success, your struggles, your challenges, pray for one another, you know, um, even though there is doctrinal differences, we are one uh, because we have the same uh, uh, Holy Spirit, uh, the same uh, one God, uh, the same word. We are all saved by one cross of Jesus Christ, washed by his blood, uh, so we can... Uh, you know, come together, even as we come together, you can learn from each other. Like we read in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17, it says, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. So, you know, we can, uh, when we uh, uh, have friendships with other uh, leaders in our city, you know, whether it's older leaders, mature, we can learn from them, they can mentor the, us, they can, uh, when, we ha when we fail, when we go through some weaknesses, problems, challenges in our ministry, we have a, you know, we build a relationship with them, we can go, we can ask them uh, to guide us, lead us, some of them can become our mentors, you know, we can also be people people um, who, who can mentor younger uh, leaders, younger churches, um, you know, or uh, if we are a, a church which is doing well financially, uh, we can support other churches, just to provide for them, uh, meet some of their needs, help them uh, uh, take care of their ministry, show them how to, you know, start a church, build up the church, uh, uh, how to do various things. So, you know, it can just be a good learning and enriching experience uh, for each one of us. Okay. Uh, the other thing we can learn is be comfortable being a follower, following instructions. You know, sometimes uh, we think we studied in a Bible college or we are a senior minister. Uh, we have been in the ministry five years, 10 years, three years. And then if uh, somebody else is sharing, we don't want to sit and listen. Uh, you know, we don't want to, uh, uh, we think we know everything. We, you know, why should I be listening to them? Uh, so, but you know, it's good to listen from other ministers, men and women of God, listen to that experience so that you can also learn, you can also, um, uh, you know, um, uh, benefit from their life and from their um, ministry. Sometimes, you know, when uh, we go for a crusade or a, we are invited by some other pastors, uh, uh, you know, if the past uh, and if there is a person who's leading the service and they says, everyone stand up, you know, we don't want to stand up. We don't want to follow instructions. We don't want to do what is being told because we think, you know, we are senior leaders, ministers uh, of God. Uh, we can sometimes become very stubborn, unwilling to cooperate, follow instructions. 
but uh, you know when we come together we all need to be remember that we are all standing on the same platform you know uh, god looks at all of us as one whether we have been in ministry for 30 years 10 years 3 years 3 months God looks at all of us the same way. He loves us all the same way. Uh, we are on the same level. Uh, so also we need to uh, remind ourselves, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, um, be humble enough to follow instructions, be willing, uh, humble enough to learn from others and, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, being, uh, uh, honor others, uh, uh, honor other men and women of God, learn from them and also contribute into the lives of other people and have a kingdom mindset. Okay. We'll stop here. Anyone has any questions? We'll continue with chapter eight after the break. Uh, anyone has any questions? Okay. No questions. Karen, uh, are you on a WhatsApp group with uh, Prabhu or do you have on a uh, WhatsApp group of the online students? I know the in-person students have. Okay, yeah. uh, can you just uh, kind of post that, you know, uh, I'm taking a class because uh, next Friday uh, the in-person students are having a uh, their Christmas program and hence I it's in the morning from you know uh, from in the morning at 10 I think uh, uh, to 1 p.m. and hence I can't take that class so I'm taking Pastor Roshan's class so anyone who wants to join can join I of course posted it last evening uh, but only two of you have joined so if you can just do that would be great is that okay Prabhu oh, okay thank you so much Okay, uh, we'll uh, take a break now and uh, we'll join back after the break. Okay, thank you.